Again, Google DeepMind just released an interesting new paper that gives insight into a new AI project on computer vision which they just released. And this is really, really interesting given the efficiency with which the AI works. And in case you haven't been following the news and you're wondering what Google DeepMind is, DeepMind is an AI company that started off in 2010 and had a really impressive run at the time. Presently, they're an affiliate of Google, when they teamed up with the Google Brain team earlier this year, creating the Google DeepMind. And recently, they just announced the release of their new AI, Tapir, which is short for tracking any point with per-frame initialization and temporal refinement. And this is a technology that is tailored to provide computer vision, which is an aspect of AI that's committed to helping computers understand and analyze images and videos. So this can basically be likened to giving sight to machines as they're able to process images and identify what the image is or what's going on in the video. And the application of this can be really impressive. And the Tapir technology focuses on tracking particular points and subjects which will be a really insane update to different surveillance technologies as it has the ability to run faster than real time. Pretty impressive. And in case you don't understand this, it just means that this technology can keep track of particular points of a subject even when in motion, and can have real-life applications. Tracking points in video sequences is an amazingly challenging problem. I know that there are facial identification systems that exist presently that can be able to identify different faces to a really impressive extent, but tracking points can often be excluded or disappear from the frame, making it a lot more difficult. This is where you find cameras struggling to maintain focus because the challenge is the points that can move around over time, so it's important to be able to track them accurately. And this is a really important route to go, and we've seen similar technology, Dino V2 from Meta, which makes use of self-supervised learning to produce the results required. And this has proven to be really impressive. We have a video that's dedicated to that technology, which I'll add to the link in the description. And I don't really know how that performs against this one from Google DeepMind yet, so we'll keep that in focus for another video. And for those wondering what can possibly be the application for this new AI from Google DeepMind, the technology can be really useful in a variety of scenarios like robotics as point tracking can be used to track the position of objects in the environment. This can be used to control robots or to build maps of the environment. And it won't really be long before we start seeing robots that are trained with new LLMs like ChatGPT. And imagining an inclusion of a computer vision, these advances are just going to be epic. And also, point tracking can be used to track the motion of objects in a video. This can be used to analyze the behavior of objects or to track the movement of people, which when you think about it will be really great for surveillance, as it will make it a lot easier to identify subjects in the videos. Really, I can't wait to see this being used widely. And Google DeepMind has made this AI open source, so the information and code you need on this is available on GitHub. And I can't really wait to see some crazy things that creators will be using this for. And we all know, AI has a really wide range of applications, so we're going to be seeing this technology employed in medical imaging as point tracking can be used to track the movement of organs or tissues in the body. This can be used to diagnose diseases or even to track the progress of treatment, which is really, really impressive because a lot of precision is often needed in most scenarios and that's what AI is offering. And of course, point tracking is not something that's unheard of at this point in time, as there have been alternatives that have in fact been in use for this same purpose. Just that there seem to be some gaps that Tapir seems to fill really well. And that's why I think this new AI is pretty solid. And I'll use two examples to show some of the existing methods for tracking points in video sequences that have been existing before now. One common approach taken is the use of a Kalman filter. A Kalman filter is a statistical filter that can be used to track the state of a system over time. But this is not totally helpful as Kalman filters can be really sensitive to noise and occlusions, which makes it really unstable for this purpose. Another approach to point tracking is to use a particle filter. A particle filter is a probabilistic method that can be used to track the state of a system over time. Particle filters are more robust to noise and occlusions than common filters, but the problem with this is that they can be really, really computationally expensive. 
and these shortcomings have necessitated the invention of the Tapir algorithm as a new method of tracking points. The Tapir method is a new method for tracking points in video sequences, and the Tapir method addresses the limitations of existing methods by using two stages, a matching stage and a refinement stage. And in the matching stage, the Tapir method independently locates a suitable candidate point match for the query point on every other frame. This matching stage is based on the TapNet architecture, and TapNet is a deep learning model that is able to learn to match points in video sequences. And if that's not really clear, this stage focuses on each video frame individually while trying to find the required candidate point for each query, otherwise called a query point. And this is the particular point in a subject that you will like to track in an image or video. The TapNet model is trained on a large data set of synthetic data that includes different types of occlusions and motion patterns. And this really helps to make the system a lot more versatile due to the large data set used in training. And while tracking subjects that are in motion, for example, a pedestrian walking down the street, there are multiple factors that are likely to distort the efficiency of the focus on the subject like shadows, speed, occlusions, and objects, and that's when the second part of this operation comes in. As a result, in the refinement stage, the Tapir method updates both the trajectory and query features based on local correlations. The refinement stage uses a local correlation model to update the trajectory and query features. The local correlation model is able to learn to track points that are moving quickly or that are occluded. And as you must have seen in other AI models, Tapir was measured against some benchmarks in order to ascertain its performance. And the performance is really, really impressive. And you can see that on your screen. The developers of the Tapir method evaluated the method on the TabBid benchmark, which contained both real-world videos with accurate human annotation of point tracks and synthetic videos with perfect ground truth point tracks. And this makes the TabBid benchmark a very challenging benchmark, which includes a variety of occlusions and motion patterns. And the amazing thing here is that Tapir outperformed all baseline methods on the TabVid benchmark. Pretty solid stuff. The Tapir method is also able to track points faster than in real time. This means that the method can be used to track points in real world applications. The Tapir method is really promising a new method for tracking points in video sequences. The method is able to track points that are occluded, moving quickly, or moving over long periods of time. That's really crazy, and it's a really major milestone for Google. And the fact that the method is also able to track points faster than real time is just so cool, as we will be certainly seeing a lot of real-life applications of the technology. With all these open-source models that we have rolled out in recent times, developers are targeting a wide range of applications with these technologies. And with other advancements in generative technology over the past few months, I will say that expectations are really high. So far, I have really not seen much move in the computer vision aspect of this development, and I personally think we'll soon start seeing that, given the new shift of attention to the production of physical robots. In the aspect of the development of physical robots, Google has been doing something in that aspect, and we even covered a story here some time ago about Elon Musk's company XAI, which is also suspected to be heading in that direction. Although we don't have much information on that company right now, and also recently, we've been seeing a move by Google and OpenAI to make smaller large language models, which are by the way being projected to be more efficient than the larger ones and can run on smaller devices. The idea here is to make these smaller models like Orca and the gecko-sized Palm 2 able to work without an internet connection, thereby localizing the information processing, which in turn will make it a lot more efficient. And this is a perfect combination to be found in physical robots, as they will be required to perform operations quickly and make decisions on the spot. A combination of this feature with good computer vision will definitely be shooting for something that will wow anyone who uses it. I hope you found this video informative, and if you're interested in learning more about the Tapir method, you can find the link to the paper in the description. We'll see you in the next video.